Hey there, let's talk about chapter 5. Chapter 5 is awesome because we finally get into, um, well, let's say antiderivative of 1 over x is, uh, but a lot of other things too. These are, uh, uh, we're get in, getting into exponentials, logarithms, and inverse trig functions and hyperbolic functions. There's all sorts of good stuff in chapter 5. So, uh, the natural logarithmic function differentiation. In 5.2, we're going to talk about integration. So, uh, very closely related. So, first of all, the actual definition of the natural log can be given by uh, this antiderivative. So, the antiderivative of 1 over t dt from 1 to x is the natural log of x. So, this is the natural log function. Um, let's not forget... All right, so this is the rule. This, that's it. That's the whole rule. So now we're going to remind you a little bit about just natural logs in general. Uh, a natural log function. Really, I hope that comes back. It doesn't look like it's going to come back. There it is. Uh, a natural log function looks much like this. Uh, the domain is from 0 to infinity. The range is negative infinity to infinity. The function is always increasing. It happens to be 1 to 1. And the second derivative is always negative. So uh, the graph is always concave down. Uh, 1 to 1, it has an inverse. All right, natural log has an inverse. Um, so property, the natural log of 1 is always 0. Remember that these are closely related to our exponential properties. And we might say that uh, we're going to use the natural log here. e to the 0 is 1, so the natural log of 1 is 0. e to the a times e to the b is e to the a plus b. Right? You're multiplying two things at the same base. You add their exponents. All a log is is a form of an exponent. So if we're multiplying two things inside the exponent, we add those exponents. Uh, same thing here, same idea. The natural log of a to the n is n natural log of a. And the natural log of a quotient, a over b, is the natural log of a minus the natural log of b. These are things you learned long, long ago and were reminded of in pre-calculus last semester. So... If we want to expand uh, this logarithm, right? First, we see this multiplication, and we'll take the natural log of x plus the natural log of the square root of x squared plus 5. But this square root, that's actually just a one half power. And if I have a one half power, right, I have a nice little power rule here. This says this is the natural log of x plus one half the natural log of x squared plus five. But this is where we stop. We can't go any further than that. Remember, uh, log and exponential rules follow this whole order of operations, kind of. If you're multiplying two things at the same base, you add their exponents. If you're dividing two things at the same base, you're subtracting exponents. An exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply. So order of operations has it all for us. But notice here, let's bring down a red marker so we uh, have the warning. There's nothing below addition and subtraction. Nothing at all. So I cannot simplify natural log of x squared plus 5 because there's no step down. So that's where we stop. Right? That's how I remember it. That's how I have students try to remember it. Uh, we can also condense logs, right? We can go backwards on these rules. Everything that works in one direction works in the other as well. So the natural log of x minus 2 minus the natural log of x plus 2, let's put this back in black, is the natural log of top over bottom. Of course, that's numerator and denominator, where the numerator is the one that has the positive exponent. Subtracting, so this x plus 2 will go in the denominator. All right. All right. Old school log stuff, you know that. You totally know that. Um, so here we want the derivatives. All right, we're looking at the derivatives. First of all, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. 
So in general, little chain rule here, chain rule says the derivative of natural log of u is 1 over u times du dx, also known as derivative of the inside divided by the inside. All right. Derivative of the inside divided by the inside. So if I want to find the derivative of f, I have my denominator is the inside, my numerator is the derivative of the inside. And I'm finished. That's it. Don't make it harder than that. Derivative of the inside deri div divided by the inside itself. Uh, but when we have things that don't look like they would use a logarithm, we can actually use them. Check this out. Uh, logarithmic differentiation is why I was really disappointed I couldn't be in class to dis uh, describe this one. But first step, we take the natural log of both sides. Because we can, we can deal with this. We'll deal with this later. But this natural log over here, I can expand. So the natural log of y equals the natural log of x plus 1 half natural log of x squared plus 1. Right? Just like we did in that earlier problem. But these are now easy to take derivatives of. Whoops. Making marks all over the place here. The derivative of the natural log of y. So this is implicit, right? It's the derivative, that's 1 over the inside, times the derivative of the inside. dy dx. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Leave the 1 half alone. The derivative of natural log of x squared plus 1 is x squared plus 1 in the denominator, derivative in the numerator. So we took the natural log of both sides. We simplified the uh, more complex side. Take the derivative, all right, always with respect to x. I'm going to rewrite this up here. 1 over y dy dx equals 1 over x. See how these twos cancel? Plus x over x squared plus 1. And then to solve it, if I really want to know what dy dx is, I can multiply both sides by y. Right? I can multiply it by y, but we would never leave it like that because we know exactly what y is. 1 over x plus x. Uh, my cursor got stuck, but I swear. Oh, everything's getting stuck. That's awesome. All right. Gotta love technology. What's y actually? y is x times the square root of x squared plus 1. And that's a fine answer right there. I would type that into WebAssign in a heartbeat. You could try to simplify if you wanted to. Uh, condense it, but algebra is where we make mistakes. Stick with the calculus and you'll do fantastic. Alright, evidently that was supposed to take a little more room. I'm going to click us up here. Bring the practice problems up a little bit. Alright, so just random problems. And your homework assignment will have these. Uh, just some log problems has nothing to do with calculus, just reminding you how to do logarithms. Uh, sorry about that. I keep getting stuck here in my paper and I can't make my cursor move. There we go. Uh, the natural log of x minus 1 over x to the 1 half power will be 1 half the natural log of x minus 1 over x. But remember, this 1 half has to go with both of these when I separate. So I'm going to do 1 half times all of the natural log of x minus 1 minus the natural log of x. And we'll leave it like that. Expanding the natural log of x over 4, we have the natural log of x minus the natural log of 4. Do not overthink this. 
Um, if it doesn't ask for a decimal, leave it exactly like that. Okay, just leave it. If we are going to condense um, the following using log rules, I'm working all the way from the inside out. So normally we work left to right, and I suppose I should tell you that anyway. So let's uh let's not let's keep that one third. So what I know actually is I'm going to have natural log of the cube root of something. All right, it's got to be natural log. They're all natural log. I want to condense it into a single log, so a single log. That one third power out in front is the cube root. So now I'm just going to look at things in the brackets. This is the natural log of x plus 3 all squared, plus the natural log of x minus the natural log of x squared minus 1. Addition turns into multiplication. So that's x times x plus 3 squared minus the natural log of x squared minus 1. Now we'll multiply and divide, so this will be x times x plus 3 squared all over x squared minus 1, the cube root of it all, uh, to take care of each and every little individual place. All right, next one, 4, natural log of 2. This is natural log of 2 to the 4th minus natural log of x cubed plus 6x to the 1 half power. I'm going to make that into a square root, I'm sure. To the 4th power, we have 2, 4, 8, and 16. So this is the natural log of 16 minus the natural log of the square root of x to the 3rd plus 6x which we can rewrite as the natural log of 16 over the square root of x cubed plus 6x. Remember that 1 half only goes with this variable part. That 4 only goes with the 2, so we have to do the individual bit first. Okay. Let's do some derivatives this time for calculus. <coughs> Excuse me. A little bit of chain rule here, right? A little bit of chain rule. So the derivative is something to the fourth. That's four. Something to the third. Leave the inside alone. Multiply by the derivative of the inside. Uh, done. That's it. A little bit of quotient rule here. Quotient rule says my dog's whining. Really wants to bark at somebody out front. And she doesn't want me to yell at her. Uh, okay, quotient rule says low, d high, the derivative of natural log of t is 1 over t, low d high minus high d low, parentheses are your friend, all over low squared. And if the fourth power is squared, excuse me, if the second power is squared, it'll be to the fourth. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. This t squared and this t, they'll cancel out. I have t minus 2t times the natural log of t all over t to the fourth. And I notice that each one of these has a t that I can simplify, that I can cancel out. So I'll have 1 minus 2 natural log of t all over t to the third. The derivative using the quotient rule and then simplify. Uh, this is why I'm not at school today. I might have to uh, take a minute. Two problems. I'm going to make it happen. Right, number four is going on the next page, though. Three doesn't need that much room. Uh, but let's take a look up here. Slow scroll. Slow scroll because we didn't really hit it at the very beginning. Notice that the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of u is the same thing if u prime over u. All right. It's just that in some functions, for example, the sine function, the sine is sometimes a zero, which is bad, uh, but it's also um, negative. And so in the natural log, we have to have the absolute value. 
So the derivative here is uh, the derivative of the inside over the inside. And we know that to be cotangent of x. And so don't let the absolute value mess you up here with, with uh, natural logs, but they are very, very important. All right. So we're going to use logarithmic differentiation again, my absolute favorite. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides. All I did is write natural log in front of both sides. Now I'm going to use log properties to expand my right hand side. So when I multiply, that turns into addition. Right, addition of logarithms. Don't forget the log here. And in the denominator, that is subtraction. But I don't want to use chain rules. I don't want to have a bunch of chain rules here. So I'm going to simplify again. Recall that 2 natural log of x plus 1 half natural log of 3x minus 2 minus 2 natural log of x plus 1. If I use the log properties to completely expand this, now when I find the derivative, they'll be simpler. The derivative of natural log of y is 1 over y dy dx. Just implicit differentiation, right? We know how to do that. 2 sticks around. Derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. The 1 half hangs out. The derivative of the natural log of 3x minus 2 as 3x minus 2 in the denominator and a 3, the derivative of 3x minus 2 uh, in the numerator. 2 hangs out. The derivative of the natural log of x plus 1 is x plus 1 in the denominator, 1, its derivative in the numerator. Then we take another simplifying step. This is 2 over x plus 3 over 2 times 3x minus 2, minus 2 over x plus 1. And when we multiply both sides by y, we have 2 over x plus 3 over 2. I probably should have done this simplifying step while I did my multiply by y. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y here and we are not going to simplify after this. Uh, we're not going to simplify because this is a fine answer. I have confidence that when you type that into WebAssign, you can type it correctly. Alright, that's all there is for 5.1. I'm going to do my best to get 5.2 and 5.3 up for you today as well. Thanks for watching.